Welcome. We're going to talk about CredHub. Uh, Scott and I have done this talk a few times, so hopefully there's some new added bits that you guys will be excited about. Um, and uh, so I'm Peter Blum. I work at Pivotal. I work with uh, customers. I'm a platform architect. Um, and CredHub is always an awesome product that I love talking about customers too. Um, and with me, I have Scott Frederick. Yeah, and I'm Scott Frederick. I'm on the Spring Engineering team at Pivotal. I work uh, most of the time on the Spring Cloud Services product uh, and some other smaller Spring projects. Cool. All right, let's jump in. So the story of CredHub. Um, you know, CredHub started a while back um, when we were looking at you know some of our banking customers, and we we're looking at just a few different things. So configuring you know, Cloud Foundry is really difficult. And I think that this comes from not only Cloud Foundry, but um, just configuring credentials is always hard. You know, how many times have we bought routers? Uh, you know, I remember my old uh, Linksys, the uh, old blue WRT router. You know, you go 192.168.1.1 and you log in with admin admin, right? Um, you know, when I was younger, it was like, great, my parents aren't changing the password. I can just jump in there and go and configure stuff. Um, but you know, whoever knew that those credentials were there, right? You had to go to the documentation and, and explicitly set those. Um, so you know, configuring those credentials can be hard if you don't know they're there. Um, that's a you know, and perfect example is Equifax, right? They left open a, a website with admin admin, and it's not necessarily their fault. There was a piece of vendor code that they had gotten and, and started running it, and they didn't know that they had to change the password. Um, in addition, you know, leaking credentials is easy. What happens when uh, Joe from Five Cubes Down decides to leave the company and, and gets a better offer at the next place, right? Um, he had our admin credentials to our jump boxes and everything, and um, you know, next thing I know, he's, he's got credentials to production, um, and he's working out our, our competitors, right? Not the greatest. Uh, so it's really easy to leak those credentials. Um, also, you know, as, as in a former dev life, you know, I used to do a lot of, a lot of uh, coding, and. I mean, I've, I'll be honest, I've even committed my username and password to GitHub. Um, we were building a service broker last week, and we did that. Um, so, you know, uh, it happens, it happens. And finally, uh, you know, detecting credentials after you've leaked them is hard. Until you realize that, hey, I've committed my AWS credential, and I've gone out and, you know, I look on AWS, and I got five different VMs running Bitcoin mining. Uh, probably not what you want, right? Spending a lot of money, GPUs, it's, it's, it's crazy. So, so with all of these different problems, there wasn't an easy solution at the time, you know? And, um, and really, CredHub came about, and, and I was so excited because it became a, a common solution um, to generate credentials from, to encrypt those, to make sure that they're encrypted, common place for encryption, a common place to go in and, and rotate them, so change the credential. And then, um, and a common place for the security team, you know, we talk with CSOs all the time, and they're like, I'm tired of going to 30 different systems to go and figure out where I'm at with my security. Um, and so having a centralized place to go in and say, okay, well, here's all your credentials, here's how old they are, here's when the certs are gonna be invalidated, you know, and having that one place for auditing is huge. Um, and it, of course, you know, a common, common access control, so actually, you know, defining through MTLS and OAuth2 how to get to these credentials. Um, where do we use CredHub at Pivotal? Well, pretty much everywhere now. Um, so Pivotal Container Service, if you didn't come to my talk uh, two hours ago, shame on you, but um, we talked about how you know, we can integrate CredHub with, um, with PKS or with Kubernetes itself. Um, we've had CredHub inside of Pivotal Application Service and Open Source Cloud Foundry for quite some time now. Um, Pivotal Cloud Foundry itself, right, the, the entire Cloud Foundry umbrella has been using CredHub for quite the time through Bosch. So Bosch um, abstracting away all those credentials that you use on your VMs, you know, the database credentials, uh, service brokers, which we're gonna talk a little bit about, um, you know, and integrating with, uh, you know, MySQL tiles, RabbitMQ tiles, Spring Cloud Services tiles, vendored, uh, you know, like MongoDB, we, they just built a brand new service broker um, that uses CredHub. Um, and finally, Concourse. Um, so, you know, there's some native integration into Concourse. So all those parameters, if you're familiar with Concourse, all those parameters you might um, use in Concourse, if you're feeding them in via a YAML file, get away from doing that by using CredHub. Um, so you can store those credentials in CredHub and never have to deal with putting the credential file inside of some, you know, key pass, right, that you, that you share around your, your team. Um, and don't run the risk of ever committing those parameters that you have in a pipeline to, uh, into GitHub. Um, so what, is, what does CredHub look like? 
um, from an architecture standpoint? Well, it's pretty simple. It's really just a, a microservice that's in front of a in front of a backing SQL database. Um, you know, when you when you attempt to log into CredHub, um, you know, you're going to go to an authentic authentication provider, um, you know, over MTLS or OAuth two. Um, and every time you decide to store a credential or have CredHub generate one for you, it uses an encryption provider. There's one out of the box. Um, you know, it's, a, it's not an HSM. It's just an out of the box encryption provider. Um, but you can plug in your own HSM. Um, currently, we support Luna. Um, there are some other work being done um, to, to add other providers as well. Um, and on the front end, how do we actually get to CredHub? There's a CLI. Uh, CLI, they have a I don't want to call it a V2, but there's a new version of CLI. I was pleasantly surprised. It has a bunch more um, capabilities in it. Um, and I've used a CLI quite a bit. Bosch has, for the longest time, had an abstraction called the Config Server, not to be confused with Spring Cloud um, Config Server. But there is a Bosch Config Server that uses CredHub. And of course, you can use any REST client. It's a REST-compatible you know, interface for, for all of the commands. As I say, the REST compatible interface, so what are the operations you can do? Well, it's pretty much pretty simple. Credentials, permissions, and there's this little extra thing on there called interpolate. Uh, it's a pretty cool endpoint. We can pass through our Cloud Foundry uh, VCAP services, and all the credentials that are in there, all the different paths that are in that JSON, can then be passed back to you interpolated. So they can actually come back. So if I have a JSON that has three different passwords inside of there, and they have three different CredHub um, parameters, so slash you know, Peter, slash Cloud Foundry, slash password, and slash Peter, slash Kubernetes, slash password, and I slash, pass both of those off in a JSON to CredHub, it'll actually return them back with the password in for me. Um, as we talked about a little bit earlier, there's authentication, so via mutual TLS, X509 certs, right? Um, it's a pretty powerful uh, statement to be able to take a, take a CA and sign it and get back an X509 cert that then you can go back and log into CredHub with. Um, OAuth 2 via UAA. Uh, we use UAA for that, but any, any OAuth 2 provider should work. Um, and these are the credentials that you can store. So you can just do a password. You can generate a password and a user. You can generate certificates. That's awesome. I'm so tired of doing CSRs and using OpenSSL and all this crap. I can just send off to CredHub with the CLI. I can just say, generate me a cert and use this CA. You know, use these particular flags. I want to add this key signing. You know, do, it's, just, it's awesome. I've, I've, used, I've moved to using this for almost all my cert gen generation. Um, RSA keys as well, um, and then just any JSON. You can pass any JSON you want with values in it, and it will just encrypt it and store it for you. That's pretty cool. Um, so let's take a look at the first use case that CredHub was used for. Um, and it was first used for Bosch. So in Pivotal, we use Pivotal Ops Manager. That's really our interface um, on, on Bosch. Um, and we've been using CredHub inside of both for, for quite some time now. Um, and so, you know, in the old world, uh, if you can quite see this, but there's a lot of green text in that first box, and all that green text is a cert. Um, so imagine if you're deploying Cloud Foundry, you have to not only use OpenSSL, go generate a certificate, and then paste that certificate in a manifest maybe 30 times. How many times are you going to miss a tab or add a backslash or mess up a dash? A lot. I have experience. It's, it's a lot. So what, with CredHub um, and the Bosch config server interface, we introduced this whole idea of variables. So you can add a variable at the bottom of your manifest. And um, you can have, so in this case, I'm generating a certificate with CredHub. And then what I can do is I can just put that variable name into my manifest 30 times. So it's one single word that a human can read and understand and see a typo when there's a typo, not three, in this case, 30 lines of a certificate that I might not necessarily see until I deploy the product, and three weeks later, I actually see that it's broken, right? And so really, overall, what does it mean for you as a platform team that uses Bosch every day? Um, it means that you can now not have to worry about who has access to your Bosch director, because every time they type Bosch manifest, and they get that manifest outside of Bosch, they uh, you know, essentially don't see that cert in there. They just see the variable. So it's really powerful, right? I can go and 
give you know my my new guy that's on the team that has no idea about this stuff he can go and start playing with Bosch and look at it and not not risk you know exposing my Postgres passwords and my certificates and everything to them. Um, and again, sharing of manifests, right? It makes it so easy for me to just go to Bosch and type Bosch manifest, export it to a text file, and send it to my friend that works at another company that's using Bosch and be like, hey, this is our CF manifest. And you know, I don't have to worry about ever worry, you know, leaking any credentials or going back through and redacting and going through my whole entire manifest. It's pretty cool. Um, how about concourse? So as we spoke about a little bit earlier, we can use um, Cred Hub with concourse. So, Inside of Concourse, we have a, an integration that, as we spoke about earlier, normally with Concourse, if you're familiar, you have in your pipeline, you have variables. They're always um, you know, double quoted, right? Um, and what usually ends up happening is you usually pass it a YAML file. So usually you put your parameters inside of a YAML file, and then that YAML file you have to somehow pass from you know, wherever you do a fly set pipeline, right? I do a fly set pipeline on my local machine, or I do it in on my friend's local machine, it doesn't matter, but he's gonna need a parameters file. And that's okay, but how do I move that file around? How, if I have 30 different people, you know, moving that file around is quite difficult. You can't check it into Git, or else anybody that has access to that repo is gonna see all your credentials. So it's, you, maybe you can use key pass, right? But then how do you deal with like merge conflicts, I changed the password, you didn't, all that stuff, right? So it's, it becomes a, a difficult process. So if you have Concourse integrated with, um, with CredHub, now you can just have your parameters stored in CredHub instead of using that file. So every time I do a fly set pipeline, Concourse actually reaches out to CredHub, pulls in all my credentials, and sets them into the pipeline for me on the, on the fly. Um, so what does this mean for me as a, as a team that's using Concourse? Well, once again, it enables sharing of pipelines, so I can not have to worry about passing around parameters, files, and having people replace certain things. I can just send them off my pipeline. And they can actually see the secrets and the values if they want, right, without having to have knowledge of them. So they can go and say, oh, well, what do we call this secret? Oh, okay, well, we called it uh, super secret value. No, we called it test key. Now let me go see what test key is inside of Credo. So, um, and with that, I'm gonna let Scott pick up from here because he's our ultimate service broker guy. <laughs> All right, so we're gonna switch gears here a little bit now. Uh, Peter's been talking about infrastructure and how some of the infrastructure in Cloud Foundry uses CredHub. Now we're gonna get into more of the application side of uh, CredHub and how it's used by applications. So if you've ever uh, created a service in Cloud Foundry and then bound a service to an application, you should be familiar with this JSON data structure that's on the left. So this is how the credentials for a service that's managed by a service broker get presented to an application. So the workflow is uh, when you do a CF, first you do a CF create service, and that calls the broker and creates a service instance, and then later you would do a CF bind service and bind that service instance to an application. When the service broker gets that bind request, the service broker is responsible for building what's in this credentials block you see on the left-hand side over here. And what ends up in that block is completely up to the service broker. It might be a URL with the username and password in this case. It might be a database connection string. Um, it might be a host and a port uh, with a OAuth client ID and secret. It's really up to the service broker and how it secures uh, the resources that it's provisioning exactly what ends up in that JSON blob. Um, so once, this, once Cloud Controller calls the service broker for the binding and gets these credentials back, then Cloud Controller stores it in the Cloud Controller database. So that's mainly where these credentials sit at rest in Cloud Foundry is inside of CCDB. Uh, they are encrypted in there, but they, are, they do sit at rest there. And then there's a lot of different ways that a user or an operator of the platform could reach into Cloud Foundry and get those credentials out. Um, the, you can get them through the Cloud Controller REST API, you can get them by inspecting uh, bits about the app uh, that the services have been bound to. Uh, so there's quite a few uh, ways that somebody could get what those credentials are. Uh, so what it's possible for service brokers to do is instead of returning this uh, set of raw credentials to Cloud Controller, they can instead call CredHub, ask CredHub to store that JSON block and then just put in the credentials that they're returning to Cloud Controller, this single CredHub ref. And there's sort of a convention that uh, service brokers have adopted of how to name this path for the uh, credential they're storing in CredHub. So the broker's identified, the service instance identified, and then the, the binding is identified. Um, so that's a reference to that whole JSON blob that's been stored in CredHub. 
So we're going to show you what that looks like in practice. So what I have here is we have uh, pre-pushed a few apps to Cloud Foundry so we don't have to sit and watch that uh, CF push experience. So if I show you uh, this first app, it's called Fortune Service. And this is a very simple little application. It doesn't do very much at all. What it does is it, it each time uh, this web service is hit, it's going to go to a database and pull one fortune cookie type fortune out of the database. So if I keep refreshing this page, it's just going to randomly pick an entry out of the database and return it in JSON form. Uh, so this application is talking to a MySQL database in order to get that information. And then there is a user interface. And all this application does is make a web service call back to that other application, ask it for one random fortune, and then just display it on the UI. Uh, so the reason that these are two different applications and we're showing it to you this way is because we want to show two different types of services that these applications are using that are both Cred Hub enabled. Um, so if I go to uh, the Fortune Service application, let's do that one. I'm going to show you the environment for that Fortune Service application. So this is all the environment that's been set up by Cloud Foundry for this application, including this VCAP services environment variable that we showed you on the slide. And in this case, this application is bound to several services. This is a config server that's provided by Spring Cloud Services. And you'll see in credentials, all that's in there is this one Cred Hub reference referring to this uh, binding that was created to bind it to that application. There's also a service registry bound to it, and there's the path to that CredHub ref. And then we have the MySQL database instance that that backend app is using, and this MySQL service broker is also CredHub enabled. So each service broker has to be CredHub enabled so it knows to talk to CredHub to store that JSON in CredHub. Pretty much all of the pivotal service brokers, the latest versions of those, I believe are now CredHub enabled. And other partner and other provided uh, service brokers should be getting Cred Hub enabled also. So now anybody who has the ability to view this environment just by doing CFENV can't see what those credentials are. They're hidden behind that Cred Hub reference. And then we can even SSH into the container for that application. So now this is in the, the garden container where this app is running. And I can echo that same VCAP services environment variable. Peter's hopefully watching for typos. And I'm going to pipe it through JQ just to pre-print the JSON that's in there. And we'll see the same thing again. Uh, we see nothing in here but the credit refs. We don't see the raw credentials. So we have an SSHing into this container provides that level of security uh, where you can't see what these credentials are. So we've seen that the applications are, in fact, talking to these services. Uh, it's talking to the MySQL database. It's also talking to a Eureka service registry. That's how these two apps know how to talk to each other. It's how the UI app knows to talk to the service app, is they're both registered to Eureka. Uh, and this application is using, uh, it's written in Spring Boot, and it's using Spring Boot actuators. So I'm going to go to actuator and this is now showing the environment that the application sees. And part of the uh, environment that's exposed to the application is this flattening of the VCAP services environment variable. This is something Spring Boot does automatically. So what we'll see here is in the VCAP services for the Fortune DB, we don't see the Cred Hub ref. We see credentials with a port, a JDBC URL. There's more stuff for the database down here, a password there, and a username. So this is just proving again that the application is seeing that raw credentials block even though you can't see it with CF ENV or with CF SSH. So this application didn't require any code changes to make this happen. That uh, conversion of the Cred Hub ref to the raw credentials is done automatically on behalf of the application. So let's talk about how exactly that's done. So Peter mentioned earlier this uh, interpolation endpoint. That's one of the REST endpoints on CredHub. And it's a really interesting endpoint uh, that Peter started to describe. So what anybody that's using the CredHub API can do is take this entire VCAP service, oh yeah, thank you, 
The entire VCAP service is payload, like you saw with CFE and V or with the echoing inside the shell. Pass that entire VCAP services JSON block to this cred hub endpoint, and cred hub is gonna walk that, that JSON structure looking for any of those cred hub refs and any that, it's find, any that it finds in there, it's gonna resolve them and replace in VCAP services with the, the raw credentials block. So that happens automatically for an application by the platform. Um, and this is what that looks like when it's happening inside the platform. So Cloud Controller, when it asks Diego to stage an app, Diego, uh, the launcher part of Diego is responsible for building the whole environment for the application, including VCAP services. And as a part of staging that application, Diego is gonna make the call to Cred Hub to that interpolation endpoint and get back the raw credentials and then the raw credentials are what it actually injects into the environment. So um, just to recap, service brokers need to be modified to write their credentials to CredHub instead of returning the raw credentials. Applications require no uh, changes to be able to see those raw credentials at runtime. That happens automatically for them on the platform. Okay, uh, so then the last thing we're gonna touch on is this area of user provided service instances. So this use case is uh, where you have applications running on the platform that need to get to some type of service that's not managed by the platform by a service broker. So maybe you've got an Oracle database that's been running out there forever and it's completely outside of Cloud Foundry and you need apps on Cloud Foundry to talk to that or you've got some web service that's out there on the public internet not managed by Cloud Foundry and you wanna talk to that. So uh, you wanna be able to provide the credentials for services like that to your apps in a secure way as well. And the way you can do that now is with uh, a CredHub service broker. So this is just a way to call CredHub and ask it to uh, add a set of credentials to CredHub through the service broker and then you bind that service to your application and from there on it looks to the application like a managed service instance. Uh, so let's go ahead and show you what that looks like. So we have already created a service in here and I'll just show you the command line that we use to create that. Uh, let me put that at the top of the screen. Okay, I'll make this even bigger. Is it control shift plus? shift plus. There you go, yeah. There we go, let's make it nice and big. So what you do here is CF create service and CredHub is just the name of the CredHub service broker and it's got a single plan called default. And then you give it the name that you want the credential to have that you're gonna bind to the application. And then in this dot dash C block uh, with this JSON, you can just pass in anything you want. And then it's just between how you form this and what your application is looking for. You just have to have an agreement there as to what this structure looks like. So in this case, we've created a little bit of a compound structure where you have the service info key at the top, and then it's got a, a URL and a username and password. Uh, so we have this bound to an application already. So this last application we have is called Secure Credentials Demo. So once again, if I uh, do the CFE and V in that, we'll see that it has one service bound to it, which is this uh, secure credential service that we created with that command line. And it's got a very similar path-like structure, uh, like the ones that the service brokers created. And I can open this application. Uh, what's it called again? Where did it open? Decide to show us the code on GitHub instead. <coughs> yeah, we can do that too. There we go. Yeah, so all this app is doing is just showing the credentials that it got. And was that a different tab? <coughs> the code? Yeah. Yeah. There it is. Uh, there it is. <coughs> so all this code is doing is it's a Spring Boot application, and it's just getting injected with this VCAP services like we saw in the environment on the Fortune UI. And it's just binding that to the service info object. And then it's just displaying that service info object. So let me show you what that looks like too. So just a simple object that has those same fields with the URL, username, and password. So again, that's just showing one more time that 
Those are the wrong, wrong, wrong presentation, sorry. Okay. Lost our presentation. Huh. Okay. Okay, okay, we'll get that back. So that's the end of that demo section anyway. That's just showing how applications can access those credentials uh, kind of automatically either through a service broker or through a user-provided service. If you want to show the CLI, I think we've got time. Yeah. All right, instead of showing you more slides, which kind of boring. Yeah, that was anyways. the end of the slides anyway. Um, Let's go ahead and show you the CLI a little bit. So the CLI, um, I'm already logged in here. So you can log in to any CRUD hub. There's a CRUD hub inside of Bosch, and there's also a CRUD hub inside of Cloud Foundry. So once you're logged in, you can actually do a find. And this will show you, all right, let's make it a little bit smaller. This will show you all the different credentials. Now what's really interesting here is this is the Cloud Foundry, um, the Cloud Foundry <coughs> CRUD hub that we've logged into, right? So here you can actually see the different service broker credentials. Right? I can see all the credentials that have been stored in CredHub, but I can't actually see the credential. I can only see the reference. So these are the references that you would see in your application container. Right? So if somebody were able to hack into your container, get in there and see what's actually going on inside that container, this is the only thing they'd really see. They wouldn't actually see those environment variables. right? And so let's, let's go ahead and try to get one of these things. So let's. We can do cred hub get dash n and put that in here. And just like we're expecting, right? I'm a different user. I was not enabled to look at this credential. This is Scott's credential, so why would I be able to see his credentials, right? And so we're expecting to see this. And this is now what you can do with the cred hub CLI. Yeah, and this British permission model is very fine grained. So what a service broker is typically going to do is when it takes that JSON block and stores it. It's going to give itself permission to read and write and delete that, that credential because on an unbind it needs to be able to delete it back out of CredHub. And it's going to give the application container the permission only to read that credential. So if you don't have the UAA client ID and secret of the service broker or you're not in that application container, you can't even read this, this, yeah. uh, per, this credential. So what I also wanted to show you guys was a way that we generate credentials. In this case, this was something I ran in my last presentation when we were doing Cred Hub and Kubernetes integration. But in this case, I'll run it as well. And so you can see that I just created a password via the CLI. I don't know what it is. I'm not going to get exposed to that password. And then I could go and actually bind that into my container. right? So it's a very simple CLI that generates me credentials. I can get credentials. I can see. I can set them. I can set the permission on these credentials, um, all with a with with great little CLI here. That, um, that I don't think uh, many people even know is out there. So, um, so with that, I think um, I think that's it. We'll take any questions. Any questions? No. Sure. Yeah. Sure, yeah, yeah, so you could, uh, so let me repeat the question. The question was, can you actually generate a certificate with CredHub and then bind that into a container, right? So your application could use that. And of course, um, you can do that using the broker. So you could, with the broker, you can go ahead and like do a CredHub ge generate credential, right? And then pull that credential out and just store that in then with the CredHub service broker if you wanted to, sort of a two-step process. Or you could end up just, um, the, the service broker is out there, and if you want, you could make yourself a service broker that instead of taking any credential, takes a, creden you know, it takes a flag like, hey, I want to generate a, a certificate, right? Um, and, and that's even a great idea for Colin. I don't know if Colin's here, but he's our PM for, for CredHub 8. And um, that might be a great idea. Uh, we, could, we could talk about it um, to yeah. actually add to that service broker as well. And we talked about how in the service broker scenario, if you're binding to a service, an app doesn't have to know how to talk to CredHub to get to those raw credentials. But there's nothing stopping you from, there's nothing stopping an application, application from using the REST, hub, the REST API to talk to CredHub directly. So you can certainly do that as well. Yeah. Sure, in the back. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. Yeah. If you go and look at the CredHub API yeah. docs for that generate password call, there's a whole set of fields of how many numbers, how many letters, how many special characters, yeah. um, all that kind of normal parameters you would expect to be able to see. Yep. Same thing for um, pretty much all the fields it can generate. Yeah. Yeah. So include special characters, exclude numbers, um, you know, a bunch of different Upper functions. Uppercase, lowercase. Right? Yep. Length. Sure. With compare it to Vault? Yeah. Colin has a great answer for this. Um, Cred Hub versus Vault. <laughs> but uh, Colin, do you wanna you wanna take this one? I mean I can take it if you can compare Hub Sure. Yeah. Um, so the question is, can I compare Cred Hub to Vault? Uh, <laughs> I would say uh, my answer to that question is no. Okay. And the reason is uh, Credit Hub is not intended to be deployed at the data center level. Okay. So whereas Vault is uh, generally expected to live independently of platforms, to be a data center-wide sequence of service, possibly even federated across multiple uh, uh, data centers, uh, Credit Hub instead is purpose-built for the platform. It's intended as an extension point from which you, uh, or maybe you can even think of like a Dropbox for uh, Cloud Foundry uh, and for uh, long term for the platform as a whole, um, the PCF ecosystem. So the right way to think of Credit Hub is more as the way that uh, PCF uh, simplifies the process by which you can hook in your uh, data center wide solution <coughs> to Cloud Foundry to make it easier for your Cloud Foundry applications to uh, integrate with a, a data center wide federated secrets management system. Uh, rather than having to add a bunch of code to your digital applications, all the different vault libraries or whatever, um, we demonstrated for you uh, the way in which we basically handle that by default. Um, and uh, rather than having to do this sort of piecemeal app by app, you can handle it uh, at the platform level uh, and simplify that integration. Uh, so let me summarize that. So. Uh on the microphone for anybody. So what's the comparison between Vault and CredHub? Uh, the real comparison is there is no comparison. Um, you know, CredHub really is purpose built for PCF. Um, so you know, the whole entire PCF umbrella, Cloud Foundry, Kubernetes, and PKS, PCF, PaaS, um, and service brokers, right? So, um, and then we'll, we'll take any other questions, but uh, unfortunately we have to wrap it up. Thanks. Yes, we'll here for more.